the government will today set out new plans to fly asylum seekers 4,000 miles to Rwanda in Africa to be processed. Well, the plan is said to help address the global challenge of illegal migration and tackle small boat crossings. Syrian refugee and BAFTA award-winning documentary filmmaker, imagine saying that in the same sentence, Hassan Akkad fled his home, home country six years ago, risking his life in an overcrowded din dinghy trying to reach Europe. Hassan joins us now. Uh, Hassan, and I know, you know, we're here to talk about the current crisis, but your own personal story, I think, just very quickly, it's quite incredible, you know. Uh, you you got here and you you got here and you've won a BAFTA. <laughs> you and I remember during the COVID pandemic, you volunteered yeah. in your hospitals. We all saw the video, but just tell us briefly. And I know we don't want to dwell on it, but just tell us briefly about your journey, literally your journey, how you got here. Um, my story is the story of millions of refugees who happened to hit rock bottom at home. Uh, in my situation, I uh, you know everyone is aware of what happened in Syria. I got arrested and tortured by the government. And naturally, I had to flee my home. That's what happens when you can't live in your home country anymore. You leave. Now, I left and I stayed in the region. I tried different countries before I came here. When things weren't working up for me, then I decided to take that, to do that journey, cross through Europe, and then come here on a, four, or on a or come, come from Calais to England and claim asylum in 2016. Right. Now, look, there are people who, and the people who have been messaging us this morning and say, this is a good thing, we've got too many migrants coming. And they can see it, and it does look, visually, it looks terrible. Thousand people turning up on these rubber boats, rubber dinghy. people think that, you know, are struggling themselves in this country. What do you say to those people? Say, look, we, we, there's too many people coming, and actually Rwanda's probably a good thing. It's worth trying, because if anything, it could be a deterrent. Well, the numbers don't lie. I mean, it is more visible here because people come on boats, but let's discuss numbers. Uh, according to NHCR, there are around 35 million refugees around the world less than 0.2% of them live, are in the UK. For a country with, this, with the fifth strongest economy in the world, less than 0.2% of refugees live here. Lebanon, the size of Wales, has more refugees than us. Turkey, Pakistan. So um, we don't, we're not, we, to be honest, Britain doesn't have a refugee crisis. <coughs> yes, it is a crisis for people to cross on these crowded dinghies across the channel. It risks lives. But the problem lies in the fact that there are no safe routes to come and seek asylum in Britain. You cannot basically walk into an embassy um, in Kabul or in Damascus or in South Sudan and say, I want to claim asylum. And at the heart of this crisis, we have to remember there are humans, people like you, like me, like your viewers, who basically, if it's ha through the lottery of life, happen to born in a country which is ravaged by war, and then, you know, it says a lot about their resilience to basically decide to make the move, get out of that country, and then cross thousands of miles and come here and to, see, to seek yeah, asylum. Mm. We're not having a crisis. This is not a crisis. The whole political system here in this country right now is built on scapegoating these vulnerable people. Because every time something happens, and I'm really fed up with this. I've been living here for six years, for six years but it's happening quite a lot. Every time something happens, yeah, but look at those foreigners. Mm. I know this, I mean, we, <laughs> our leaders are breaking the laws, but look at these migrants, look at these refugees. This is where you should be angry. Mm. So to your viewers and to your people who are telling you this is a good thing, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for someone to leave a dictatorship, a totalitarian country, and then risk their lives and come what here, do, what and then, a country, then Britain decides to, 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 to send them to another dictatorship. What, what do you say to some of those that will say that actually that they're pretending that they're fleeing a dictatorship, they are coming with that sort of, the guise of that, but really they're just economic migrants, they're coming here to get a job and make money, and, you know, and they're just using this system to do that? Well, <laughs> let's be honest, this country, I think, in my opinion, cannot function without migrants. Migrants who come here, even economic migrants, will do jobs that British people will not do. We've seen this through, during the pandemic. We had a harvesting crisis because economic migrants couldn't come here. Well, because we still of the have, don't we? OK, yeah. so yeah. now in terms of asylum seekers yeah. and refugees, according to, according to the Home Office status and according to, according to the Refugee Council, the vast majority of people who are coming here are genuine asylum seekers. They deserve that right. They deserve the right to be granted asylum. Yeah, well, you're right. The Home Office's own system, they, of all those that did come here illegally last year, the majority of them were found to have absolute right to be yes, here. Yes, and, 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 uh, and I would be very careful mm. with wording because it is not illegal to cross borders and then claim asylum, according to the UN, according mm. to international law. 
It is not illegal to it's not how illegal it, to cross and come and claim asylum. How does it make you feel that you know and it's had its own problems, the Ukrainian refugee system? But on one hand, we're saying to Ukrainians that if you can get here, get here, and we're encouraging uh, people to open uh, yeah, their homes and hope in your homes. How yeah. does that make you feel? How do you think it will make because other Syrians and Afghani, ref, Afghan refugees feel when they when they hear that they're going to be sent to Rwanda, quite possibly, where one, the Ukrainian refugees are able to come in and, and live in a in a house in Surbiton? One can wonder if Britain is having a refugee crisis or a racism crisis, because if you are willing to tell people to open their homes for Ukrainians, which is incredible, I feel I, I, my heart goes to the Ukrainians and what's happening. Russia, what well, Russia did to Ukraine, did my own, to my own home country. And I think they should be uh, looked after and put up and all of that. But why, why encourage people to look after Ukrainians and put them up while in the same place you're going to tell, you're going to, you're going to turn around and um, uh, send Yemenis and Afghans and, and, and Syrians and South Sudanese maybe to, 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 to Rwanda. What happens if a boat crosses the channel and there's an Afghan, a Syrian, a Yemeni and a Ukrainian? Are you going to send the Ukrainian to a British people, uh, to, to, to a Brit's house and then send the others to a detention centre in Rwanda? Well, I mean, we had our, a political commentator on Cindy Yu before who was making the point about, you know, Ukrainian are a near and neighbour, they're more similar to us culturally and also, you know, a lot of people getting in touch this morning have been making the point about why people who are seeking to come here or are seeking asylum don't go to a country nearer to their own country they do. to be able to do that. They rather do. than trying to make the dangerous yes. crossing, rather than risk their lives. Two important points here. Two important points. First of all, there shouldn't be a hierarchy in compassion and care. We shouldn't look after people who have blue eyes or drive cars like us or are civilised people. We should look after everyone, OK? Now, people... The, the minority come here. I'll tell you about Syrians, okay? I'll give you Syria as an example. Four million Syrians live in Turkey. One and a half in Lebanon. Nearly half a million people live in Iraq. A million live in Jordan. And what, less than 100,000 came to Britain. So th the vast majority of people stay in the region. We get the smallest number of people, but we, we, we tend to talk about it the most because our leaders who, t t t t who, who, who are, uh, you know, breaking laws left and right, it, it works for them. It's a distraction, mm. you know? And, Hassan, what would you say, though, that it is going to be deterrent? If you were in Calais right now and you're, you're waiting for the, your, your orders, you can, get, you can jump on that dinghy, but then you hear, hang on, if I get there, mm. I might be sent to Rwanda. Is that going to be deterrent, do you think, for many it, people? It won't, no. Why because, not? Because when you are in Calais in the jungle, you don't, you're not going to know the ins and outs of all the asylum laws. When I was in Calais six years ago in the jungle. I didn't know about the process. I didn't know, I didn't even know what asylum means, to be honest. I didn't even know what to say when I got here. I had to say, I want to claim asylum. I didn't even know that. I mm. found out later through Google. Mm. So it's not gonna deter people. It's actually gonna cost lives. Mm. And we saw the Australian model where a 12 year old um, uh, burned himself, burned mm. herself to death in a detention centre and, and, because of that. And the one thing I feel really proud is, I know what we'll be talking about, is that on the whole, Britain has a, a good reputation when it yes. comes to immigration and refugees. Yes. Rwanda, we haven't even talked about this yet, but Rwanda, and this is according to the Human Rights Watch, that uh, this, is, this has been verified, that there was an issue uh, in 2018 where yes. refugees protested outside From the, the UN building. Yes. Yeah. And, and they were they were protesting, and and I think eighteen or twelve of them, twelve, 12 of them, them were got shot, shot by the and police. killed by the Rwandan police. Yes, we could potentially have refugees come here, they go over there for process, processing, not happy that they're there for processing, protest, and then be shot. I mean, it's disgusting. Isn't it? It's not, and it's also not very British. Mm. You know, yeah. we are, we're, the, 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 our, we're rebranding Britain as a global Britain. A global Britain doesn't send the most vulnerable people to a dictatorship to be shot yeah. by the police. Okay. Uh, Hassan Akkad, thank you very much. Can you go and win some more BAFTAs now, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in with your perspective. Thanks, thanks for having thank me. Thank you very much.